special treat for you today and actually something that we're going to be doing on the channel here for the next, well, during the camel train, we're going to have this weekly special. Camel Connection. They are the camel channel on YouTube. If you haven't checked them out, you can click right there to check out Camel Connection. Uh, Russell and Tara run Camel Connection. They specialize in helping people train camels, but really on a trust-based training. Not like, you know, you're not coming here to, to rewire your camel and make it do what you want. You're establishing a connection. That's why they're called Camel Connection. And Tara, Tara and Russell are going to be helping us over the next, you know, camel train. Throughout this camel train, they're gonna come onto the channel every week, once a week, and give us some good, solid tips and advice on camels. So today, Tara is gonna be coming on and we're gonna be talking about working with a calf, Solomon. The first problems we've been experiencing with our new camels has to do with that connection. Millie, my feeling is Millie is a little bit distant to me. Solomon's quite the opposite. He's become very, very friendly, but someday Solomon will be a giant bull camel and he could be dangerous. So while he's very friendly now, we do have to establish some boundaries with him. So Tara is coming on to help talk to me and coach me with establishing a connection, setting some boundaries. Let's dive right into this training session with Tara. She's all the way over in Australia, so morning for her, which is tomorrow for me, uh, evening for me right before it's camel milking time. So let's check that out. And, uh, it's, and it's recording. Cool. Cheers, Mr. Solomon. And uh, Hello, cheeky boy. <laughs> we are loving these camels, though. These things are like... <laughs> They're, they're definitely my, uh, by far my favorite animal we brought onto this homestead. They are like, oh they are my like, gosh. They're such a good energy for me. They're very um, grounding. It's nice. Yeah, and we got, we got trained. I mean, they were already far along with training. Like, we didn't get wild camels, you know? So I know there's still a lot of work we can do, but like, at least they're, they're already like milking wasn't a big deal. He's, he's saying hi to the dog right now. So it's been really, really good. We're really enjoying it. So just something I've noticed just then, and you may not have picked up on yet. So when he went to look at the dog and then he came back, he did a, I don't know if you've noticed your camels, like they do this ear twiddle, like they, they wiggle their ear. So, okay. um, cause you came in to pat him just now. And um, after he had looked at the dog and you touched him um, just yeah, on, on the side of his face and he twiddled his ear. Now that's actually a sign that the camel's comfortable with you being around them. It's like a desensitization oh. thing. So there's a couple of spots on the camel's body. So that one is behind the ear. So he might do it again. He might not. Um, so if you touch behind the ear now, he might give you a little, a little twiddle. See that? Yeah. Yeah, so it's just a little indicator to you that that camel's comfortable being around you. Um, awesome. And another spot on the camel's body for a camel that's sort of more used to being touched is, um, so on the front leg, front leg of the camel, sort of behind, it's sort of like their underarm, armpit, I guess you could say. Um, behind there, if you touch it, it can kind of twiddle a little bit. So they're just desensitizing themselves to you being around them. So yeah, it's, it's always, it's kind of like a hello to, you know how dogs wag their tails? Well, we sort of consider this as like, like dogs wag their tails to, you, you know, that they're comfortable with you. Um, and in this sense, it's sort of like, this is the, the dog wagging the tail. It's like the camel's just twiddling the ear. Yeah. So that's something we want to look for. I think, and you tell me as, as we go through this, Tara, I feel like he's more comfortable with me than she is. I okay, look. I'm not surprised about that because dairy camels often are quite reserved. Like uh -huh. they just kind of like, oh, you know, I know what I need to do. You know, I'm just uh -huh. going to do it. So often, um, and I don't know like what sort of formal training or anything that she's had, but because they're a production animal, they don't get that like you're doing with Solomon there. They don't get that kind of one-on-one, yeah. -on -one, like camel connection stuff. It's kind of just yeah. a production sort of thing. He, he like comes right over. He's, he's gotten very friendly with us. But like I said, I feel like Millie is more, she like knows the routine, 
but she's not, um, I don't feel like she's as at ease as he is. And there, that's a very common thing. And also when they're babies, they are, they are more receptive to new things as well. Like they, they're very, they're like a toddler, very curious, like, you know, what can I do wrong? What can I do right? You know, let's, let's just try different things all the time. And, um, but the great thing about, there's one thing that we've noticed about camels is they know when you're helping them. They just have really? this. Yeah. Like they, we've had so, so many experiences where camels have just known that you help them. And I'll give you one example when a camel gets caught in a fence. So unlike other animals like horses and stuff, when a camel gets caught in a fence or wire or in something that they can't move their legs, they will actually just, um, they will stop still. They won't fight it. They will literally resign to the fact that this, this thing is caught around them. Um, which wow. gives you an opportunity as the handler to save them. And then you're actually building this relationship by saving them from this, you know, this awful thing that they can't get out of. And they remember that. They're just like elephants. They do not forget. They remember wow. it forever. And it, it is this like building, you know, you don't want to deliberately get your camel caught in a fence just to rescue yeah. them. But, <laughs> you know, there's always something we have to do with our camels. If that's drenching, our Camels hate being drenched. They don't enjoy it. It doesn't taste nice. Like they don't like all that stuff, but they know that we're helping them. Um, and the great thing also is that everything is recoverable with camels. So even um, the worst case scenario with camels that, are, you know, are unruly and really dominant and things like that, you know, 99.9% .9 of camels will come good. So, the things that you were doing, like grooming him, putting positive, you got to put more positive experiences so the negative can eventually sort of go to the back of the mind. So they'll never forget it, but yeah, more positive things in front. We've been really spending a lot of time with him. Um, we've been spending a lot of time just grooming, petting, uh, you know, walking around a little bit. Um, my plans going forward, I'd like to get him uh, you know, start really training him and I'd like to get him out of this little paddock here and go for walks and things. But I want to build up, before we start even opening that gate, I want to build up that trust. So where, for us, you know, where are we at right now when you look and see Tara and how do we start building that, that relationship? Baby camels are really moldable. Like they are probably one of the most, like out of a whole of a camel's lives, a baby camel is the most trusting because they're just coming to the world. They're expecting everybody to look after them like their mum looks after them. You know, everything's done for them. You know, they, they got their milk and food on hand and all that sort of stuff. So it's actually the thing you have to be cautious of is not overdoing it with baby camels. Um, if he was like uh, three or four years old, I would be saying, yep, do all the things, get the training down pat, blah, blah, blah. But it's actually less is more with baby camels. And this is where a lot of camel owners go wrong. They buy a baby camel. It's super freaking cute. It's super fluffy. You just <laughs> want to touch them all the time and you just want to be around oh, them because yeah. they're so beautiful. Um, but that can cause problem in itself where they're looking to you. Like they, when they get older, they'll end up being more dominant over you because that's just sort of how their brain works. So at this point, sorry, at this point in time, he's, um, he, so how old is he? He's a year old. So he's entered his toddler phase. Um, so when they're newborn, it sort of lasts for about a year where they're just infant sort of thing. So now he's getting into his toddler phase. And I, I remember you sent me a video via email where he was being a bit cheeky. Yeah. He, did behind you, but he was puffing yeah. up his cheeks and he was like charging me. If it's ready, there it is. Hi. Uh -uh. No, that's enough. Don't you start that. Don't you start all that. That is a behavior you do not want. Do you all enjoy watching me get schooled? How about that Solomon though? He's a, he's, he's a cutie. He's a little ham. We're gonna continue with the camel training lesson that we're getting right now, but first it's time for the Homesteady Camel Train shout out. Today's Homesteady Camel Train shout out goes to Shannon and Bobby Eiler. Now this is fun. Bobby writes, Shannon, he is my soon to be husband and I, Bobby, she, am soon to be wife. It's a very fun twist of fate. 
Shannon and Bobby are working together on their homestead, Willful Distinction Homestead. I like that name, Willful Distinction Homestead. I think that's pretty cool. Shannon and Bobby are making their home, their urban home, steady. Uh, they're at their urban homestead, Willful Distinction Homestead. I like the name of that homestead. What do you think? I thought that was pretty cool. In Wisconsin. Right now they're dreaming of greener pastures where maybe they'll have more land than they currently do, but I love their attitude. While they're at their urban homestead, they're learning skills, gaining experience to grow and preserve their own food. Their plans for this year, even at their urban homestead, grow their own garden, raise some meat rabbits, awesome choice, learning to can and ferment, and I really like this one. They're gonna start a website, probably something to do with that homestead that they're building, and also they're gonna say I do in June. So congratulations, that's so exciting. You can check Shannon and Bobby out at their website. So maybe they're building another one or maybe they built it while waiting to get their camel train shout out. Anyway, willfuldistinction.com, really bright out here. In addition to their website, you can check them out on social media. I think they have a YouTube channel. If they do, I'll link to it right there. I'm gonna look for that. And uh, anyway, go and say thank you to Shannon and Bobby for this episode. Keep your eyes peeled for your Home City Camel Train t-shirt, which is going to be coming. And uh, if you would like to join the Camel Train, there are less than 15 spots, less than 15 spots left. Lifetime membership to our library of tons and tons of videos all about growing your own food, interviews with experts, people who know more than me, who to help teach me how to homestead, you can enjoy those interviews on demand. Get your t-shirt, get your shout out. There is less than 15 spots left. We're coming to the close on the camel train. So click there to join the camel train. Hi. Uh -uh. No, that's enough. Don't you start that. Don't you start all that. That is a behavior you do not want, um, especially if you're going to keep him as a bull. Um, the thing I wanted to say about the bull, um, keeping him as a bull, is that you really need to consider the safety of everyone on your farm as well, and that includes other animals and also your children and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, do you really need a bull or can you send your cow away to get bred because it is much safer for you and your family, especially with young children, to not have a bull on the farm? Um, cause you know, I can't like some bulls turn out really beautiful. And sometimes actually he might actually be one of those bulls that won't breed with his mum because he's got this, you know, mother son relationship. We've had camels like that, that actually won't breed with certain camels because they have this sort of relationship. Um, so there's some things to consider with the bull thing and, um, definitely when they're in rut, which is always the winter period, that's so female camel doesn't come into season it's the they ovulate but the male ca camel um comes into season which is during the winter periods um so yeah like do you i think the question you need to ask your family is do we want a rutting camel around at this time um you know they they do need a lot of work if you keep them stimulated with their mind they are a lot better bulls um because they're stimulated um but yeah if you I think you just got to work it around your family life and stuff like what what's going to be good for us moving forward into the future the things that we always say for people to look out for is well let him grow with the testosterone he needs that testosterone to grow um that a lot of bone problems occur when they get neutered too young um and they just right. don't grow into themselves they end up little camels and they have a lot of arthritic issues in the future and bone um deformations too um so yeah, it, it really is a, a play it by ear thing. Like I don't, <laughs> he's just, oh man, I feel you. <laughs> it's like having a toddler, right? Oh yeah, definitely. That's a great way to describe it. Yeah. So it's really, for you guys, it's a play it by ear thing. Like you're not going to know what you, what, what's going to happen in the future, how quickly he's going to turn into a bull. But if you feel unsafe at any time, you there you know like and he's about two or three years old and his his um testicles have dropped and you know he's showing bull behaviors <laughs> hi solomon oh my god i love you <laughs> <laughs> aren't they so lovable that's the problem people <laughs> yes yes <laughs>
I think you turned off your camera. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh, he's. What are you doing, buddy? All right. He definitely he hit stop video. <laughs> you stopped the video. What? You don't want to be. Uh, you don't want to be called cheeky. He, or he doesn't right, want to be neutered. He's like, they're talking about neutering me. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> That makes sense, taking it, uh, we got plenty of time, right? I mean, he's one years old. When you say don't do, um, don't do too much, is that too much with training, too much time, too much, uh, like, working with him? What do you mean by don't do too much with him? Yeah, so, um, like, <clears throat> it's, it's kind of the opposite to human babies. Like, human babies, you want to nurture them, you want to hold them all the time and all that sort of stuff. But with, he, he needs to learn how to be a camel. Okay, gotcha. and he will he will mimic behavior of the things that he is most around. And if that's uh -huh. you or a dog or a cow, whatever it is around him, he will mimic that behavior. Um, so he will start thinking that he's a human. So he will think, oh, like he might get a, a year down the track, he's twice the size. He's like, I'm not that big. I could probably kick my front legs and I probably wouldn't hurt anybody. Like he uh -huh. doesn't understand that because he's just a toddler at the moment. So okay. um, it's now is when you need to enforce really strong boundaries. So a practice that I like, and we've got this uh, video on our YouTube um, channel, Camel Connection, about ba uh, baby camels and boundaries. Um, and what, what I, um, what I'm coaching people through there is if you're in a situation just like you are now, okay. And he's standing there, he's happy to be there with you. And then you take that opportunity to push his shoulder away. Like, cause this is what the mother would do. She's like, okay, we've had five minutes together. I've had enough. They, she will push him away. And so this is your opportunity to start setting those boundaries. So rather than him decide when it's enough mm -hmm. and he walks away, either you, you walk away first, like you just got to read the animal. So you're really in cementing in his brain that, you know, you're, you're the leader here. You know, you're, right. you're the herd leader. Um, and in a moment like this, like, you know, they're cute and fluffy and you just want to pat them and pat them, I know, like, but you've just got to really, like, just take those moments to, to just go, well, what sort of camel do I want in the future? Do I want a really pushy camel or do I want a camel right. that I am the leader and he's very clear and knows that I am the leader? So when you would, when I'd push him away, would it just be like, a, just you're nudging him off, kind of like, all right, go off kind of thing or? Yeah. So if you, if you've noticed with, um, what's the mother's name again? Millie. Millie. Yeah. So I don't know if you've noticed them to interact, but um, most um, cows will actually push, either walk away from their, their baby and then the baby will follow. And, and or push them like camels are just have this in a herd environment they just push on each other just to enforce boundaries with certain personalities and things like that so it's a it's a natural thing that a camel already understands um so like if you're in the yard with him now so you know what what i would almost mimic is like make a little kind of routine of pat, 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 do the brushing, whatever. And then rather than him walk away, you walk away. Simple things like that. Okay. Um, and if you're, or you pat, 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 doing your thing, talking to him, loving him up, and then you just push hard on, on his, the side of his shoulder there and just push him away. And he probably like just come back, but then push him away yeah. and just say, stay, you know, stand, stay, or just maybe whatever word you want to use, we say stand just to enforce that leadership, that new leadership, okay. because if you don't, he will be dominant and he will run all over you. <laughs> yep. He's obviously not respecting my phone. That one definitely landed in the uh, in the mud. Baby camel has cut the camera. Let's just see, and those listening, such typical toddler behavior, right? Like. <laughs> in your face wanting to oh, touch yeah. all the things yeah we've had enough experience with toddlers so we know uh thanks tara we'll all see you next right. week bye everybody <laughs> <laughs> bye bye you broke my phone buddy we got to establish some boundaries if you're going to be breaking my phone like that
awesome session with Tara from Camel Connection. They are a huge resource, so if you are thinking about getting into camels on your homestead, uh, look at them before you make the dive and uh, check out their channel. We, we were able to. Uh, there's an interview coming up soon with them, which will, uh, you, you'll learn a whole lot more about camels in that interview, so stay tuned for that. We got a whole podcast episode coming out. Hi, Homesteady Watchers. Hey, it's Tara and Russell here. If you loved the content that you heard in this video with Homesteady, make sure you head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe. And also while you're there, head over to our website and grab a copy of your free copy of Introduction to Camels. If you're considering getting into camels, that's the best place to start for you. Yeah, we've got heaps of content in there for you to have a look at how to get camels into your life. Okay, we'll see you over there. See ya. Bye. Bye.